Football, it's a young person's game, right? Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland and Phil Foden all with the world at their feet. The 30-somethings, 40-somethings and even 50-somethings aren't finished just yet. In fact, with advances in sports science, diets and an ever-increasing level of professionalism, more and more footballers are holding off from hanging up their boots. So that's why this week we're asking the question, why are footballers playing for longer? Hello there and welcome to Football Now. I'm Sam Ashu in Doha. Age is just a number is a phrase that often comes up when international sportsmen and women reach what is referred to as the veteran stage. Football is one of the few industries where you could actually be called a veteran at just 30 years old. Take a look at this group of players who are still doing the business in the 2021-22 season. Not a teenager amongst them. The star-studied lineup, including Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Gigi Buffon, a pair of 40-somethings, both still competing in Italy at different ends of the pitch. Although there is still one young man amongst them. Now, back in March, the 37-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo scored the 59th hat-trick of his career in a season which saw him go past the landmark figure of 800 goals in professional football. Elsewhere, Tom Brady, Serena Williams, Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, meanwhile, are still competing at the top of their respective sports. But what is the peak age for a footballer? So I think if you're a striker, I think you're better early 20s, probably 20 to 24, 25. That's when you seem to be dynamic and, and your pace is, it is frightening. I think as a, as a midfielder, that might be 25, 26 to, to, to 30, 31. And then a defender, maybe 30 to, to 35. And, you know, even more than a goalkeeper tend to be probably late 30s. So I think that is, is dependent on your position. And if you're a truly magnificent footballer, I think you can actually change your position as you go along in your career and completely maximise what you're capable of, uh, of achieving. Now, you might have heard the phrase, his legs have gone in football, to describe a player who can no longer compete at the same pace and level that they were used to. But whilst you lose some of the abilities as you get older, mainly pace, there are one or two qualities that you pick up along the way. People from the outside always call it experience, but it's, it's intelligence and it's um, cuteness. I think you're seeing that again from Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't think he charges around the, the field. He's certainly not the player he was in Sporting Lisbon and, and at Manchester United in the early part of your career. He's in the right place. He has bursts. He has real impact moment within the game. And that is also what helps him then prepare for the next game because he's not run 13, 14 kilometres in a game. He's give you a good 10 and a half and it's uh, maximising maximum bursts within that. So I think he is the model of, of what footballers should try to be. Another factor in why footballers are playing for longer could be down to lifestyle choices. I think that has come into the game a lot more when I started my career. There was a, a huge culture of, you know, maybe going to the pub after the game and, you know, eating a, a chip shop tea, you know, and, and making sure you just lived for the game and then did whatever you wanted in between and during my career that started to change i took a bit of time to get around to the idea that to get the best out of myself now i'm going to have to sacrifice even more of a uh, i'd say a social life because the, the saying is and the saying is true you are a, a long time retired so get the best out of yourself now now what were you doing in 1986 if your name is kazuyoshi miura then the answer could be making your debut for the Brazilian side Santos 36 years later and the man known affectionately as King Kazu is still playing. He's now into his fifth decade in the game and the Japanese international became the oldest player to play in the highest division of a nation's league in 2020 when he played for Yokohama FC at the age of 53. He did, he did something very unusual for, for, for Japanese people basically, not in Japanese sport but Japanese life. Uh, he left school, a steady school at 15. Japanese don't do that. Uh, and he went to Brazil to become a footballer. Then the J-League was formed in 1993, and his team also won the first two J-League titles. And so basically, he was starting the J-League and uh, winning everything when he was hitting his peak, shall we say. <laughs> and that was 29 years ago. I think uh, Japanese society in general has a, a hierarchy that respects age and experience and older people in general 
and it slightly transfers to football. So um, yeah, diet, training, good habits, and history is as what has kept the Japanese people and, and Japanese players particularly playing on it. The women's game has also got some extraordinary characters who played at the highest level until well into their 30s and even 40s. The most famous of those is probably Carly Lloyd. The American forward went out on a high shortly after last year's Olympics in Tokyo when, at the age of 39, she became the highest goal scorer in Olympics history. She scored twice in the bronze medal match against Australia. Brazilian Formiga is aged 44 years young and was still playing last season at Sao Paulo. She's the only footballer to have played in seven World Cups and seven Olympic Games in a career that has also seen her have spells in America, Sweden and in France for Paris Saint-Germain. So we all love a youngster bursting onto the scene a la Pele, Michael Owen and Patrick Clivert. But there's perhaps even more respect for those with the staying power to put their ageing bodies through it season after season. Do let us know who you think is the best of the oldies using the hashtag FootballNowCareers and we'll see you next time for more Football Now.